Hey guys, welcome back to the garage. Um, I wanted to do a brief overview of this Emco Turn uh, 120 CNC lathe that I picked up some time ago. Um, it came from a university back east. Uh, mechanically, it's in really good condition. It's very tight. Um, I guess this is a testament that if you look, you can find some of these machines out there and they're very suitable for home shop use and uh, retrofading controls too. Um, I say that because I think it's easier to find something that's already purpose-built for CNC than it is to try and uh, retrofit a machine that was a manual machine and uh, fitting it up and having a good outcome. It's not to say it can't be done, it's just a lot of work and expense that uh, uh, you can go through in doing a conversion of a manual machine to a CNC machine. I've temporarily fitted this machine up with a Centroid CNC Acorn uh, motion controller and I used a Gecko G540 uh, four axis stepper driver and some NEMA 34 stepper drives. I put it together quite quickly so I could assist with uh, beta testing the lathe software. Um, I also fitted this machine with a, a 2000 line uh, differential line driver output encoder. In quadrature, I get 8,000 counts per revolution. So let me uh, go handheld and I'll kind of give you a walk around, show you the temporary control and the plans for it and uh, the spindle motor and the drive that I'm using to drive it. So let's talk about the turret first. This is the original turret for this lathe. It sat up in here where this quick change tool post is now. and it used to have had a DC motor here with gear reduction to the worm inside this turret which drove the the turret disc. Well at some point the university wanted to upgrade the control from the old Emco control and um, they hired somebody to put on a new control and that person attempted to put in a DC brush servo and drive the turret directly through a uh, planetary gear reduction unit. So sadly I don't have the worm for this machine. Uh, if it did it would make it a whole lot easier to retrofit and I have some ideas in mind on how I'm going to try and see if I can make this work. Um, the Emco turret is, is, a uni, is a unidirectional that is only turns one direction and it um, there's a large paw that the, the turret rests against when it's when there are cutting forces on the tool. So that that happens to work in my favor. So um, you know if I can get it going great, if not the quick change tool post is working pretty well. Okay next to discuss is the control. As you see I kind of built a panel here as a temporary measure while I was doing the testing for Centroid. Um, here's the Gecko Drive G540. Um, these work up to 50 volts and three and a half amps uh, output for the stepper motors. I've got it um, attached to a pretty large heat sink in the back. Here's the Centroid Acorn Step and Direction Motion Controller. Um, I'm connecting the Acorn to the Gecko Drive through the DB25 port as you see here. And then um, this port is the encoder port for the spindle and that goes back into the cabinet. And of course, Acorn is uh, Ethernet based communication to the CNC PC. Um, I've got Acorn's power supply right here, 24 volt power supply, and then this is a 48 volt power supply. This is just a, a common bus for the reference, DC minus reference here. But this served well to run the machine um, while I was doing the testing. Um, over here, you can see a physical e stop button wired to uh, Acorn here. I'll be doing a new cabin. I'll be fitting this machine with AC servos from DMM Technology out of Canada. Um, I'll do a little video series on that conversion as well. But that should really make this machine, uh, with, along with the Centroid Acorn controller and its software, uh, more usable and the software up to date. Okay, the original spindle motor on this lathe was removed. Um, it was replaced with a lease and five horsepower three-phase motor and it was driven by a VFD. The VFD that came with this machine is long gone but I've 
gotten another VFD. It's one of those Huan Yang uh, VFDs off of eBay. It's a five horsepower VFD. Um, it worked well. I programmed it up. It's been working. It worked through the testing process. The one thing about this VFD is it does not have braking resistor capabilities in it. Um, that is, the circuitry was never installed in the VFD for a braking resistor. So I am replacing it with another Huan Yang VFD that I ordered from through eBay from a seller on eBay who sells them with the internal and the external braking resistors. So I'll do a quick uh, unboxing of that and uh, installation on the uh, the lathe here. But you know, those of you that are interested in those Huan Yang VFDs, be careful because a lot of them were never equipped with the circuitry to use a braking resistor. So I'll spin you around here and let you see the inside of the cabinet. Okay, first, here are the NEMA 34 stepper motors. Here's the Z-axis and here's the X-axis. Uh, they bolted right onto the existing motor mount plates and uh, there were no issues there. Being open loop system, uh, that is, there's no feedback to the controller or feedback to a motor driver they're susceptible to missing steps and I did experience that a couple of times on this machine. Now that said, I mean if you size the motors appropriately and you watch your feed rates you can get by with it and they're completely safe. Um, and, and I say safe in that they're forgiving from crashes and so forth. If a stepper crashes and it's not sized too aggressively they'll just stall and they won't hurt anything and that's what the case was with this machine here. Um, with the DMM AC servos um, hopefully that uh, when there is a, a stall, whether it's induced by me or, or something, um, that they will actually fault out and stop the control so that we don't have any damage. Uh, I am not oversizing the servo motors on this thing. I'm basically using the same size DMM servos, AC servos, from a torque perspective as was supplied by, these, by the, the original steppers. Um, I figured the machine was engineered that way, so it didn't make a whole lot of sense, especially on a machine that has such small travels, which is about a little over six inches in Z roughly, and uh, uh, about 2.2 inches in X. So there's no, I mean in my opinion, there, there's no real need to have super crazy rapids on a machine like this. Um, the other issue is here is the size of the motor, I mean I have limited space for any large motors as you can see and somebody already butchered the cabinet here because previously it had DC brush uh, servos fitted to it. Here you can see the hole in the cabinet where they cut it so I'm going to try and clean that up with a, a plate or something to cover that up. It's a shame it's that way. And then up here as well for the x-axis you can see where they notched out the top of the cabinet so the servo motor could poke out and move back and forth. Here you can see the the large Leeson 5 horsepower spindle motor. It runs well. And then here's the Huan Yang uh, VFD and you can see my attempt at connecting a braking resistor and uh, obviously it just didn't work out. So um, I'm looking forward to uh, retrofitting this machine and trying out the DMM Technologies uh, AC servo motors and their DYN2 uh, servo drives. And it should really modernize this machine and because it's been little used, it should uh, be a quite good machine when it's finished. Um, this machine uses uh, grease fittings to lube it. it uh, it's an Emco Turn 120, not the P model. The P model had a pneumatic uh, tail stock and it also had central lubrication. So this is, I guess, the bottom of the line, if you will, but still quite capable machine for limited, like prototyping and limited production use. Um, it should work very well. Okay, it might be a little difficult to see, but there's the spindle encoder. It's belted to the spindle one-to-one. -one. It's got a standard uh, differential encoder on it. So that work's already done, so that'll make this part of the conversion a little bit easier. It is driven off the spindle uh, in a one-to-one -one ratio, as it should be with a small uh, MXL timing belt. Um, so it, uh, it has been working well. I've and during testing, I've done constant surface speed tests with it. Um, 
uh, and it, it worked well. You'll see a video of the machine running, cutting a pawn, and you can see constant surface speed in action on this machine. That's the nice thing about the Centroid Acorn controller. Uh, true spindle encoder input allows accurate threading, uh, rigid tapping, and constant surface speed. If you buy the uh, Acorn Pro version of the software, which is a slight upgrade from the free version, but uh, well worth it in my opinion. So that about wraps up the overview of the Emco Turn 120. Uh, stay tuned for uh, future improvements on the machine.